balanced cross sections are important devices for illustrating and developing understanding of the structural geometry, particularly in fold and thrust belts. We use the ideas of section balancing to test interpretations that we show on cross sections and then to explore the consequences of these interpretations for understanding other aspects of the geology. So the key is that we first generate an interpretation and then we use section balancing to test that idea. So in this short presentation, I'm going to introduce the basic concepts of balance section construction. And this is largely going to be on a theoretical basis. If you want to see illustrations of how to apply section balancing in practice, well, there are other videos on the Shear Zone channel. So what is a balanced cross section? Well, this is an example from the Southern European Alps that was constructed by Schumacher et al in the mid 1990s. The diagram comes in two distinct parts, a balanced cross section at the top and a restored template which shows the trajectory of the thrust before displacement cutting through strata shown in their pre-deformation state. So the top diagram is interpreted and defined, the pre-deformation state is the condition that is inferred from the top diagram. And in order to claim that the top cross section is balanced, we have to ask if the pre-deformation state is reasonable. And by that I mean, have we been able to make it through the simple restoration of the structures that we see in the top diagram? If we can, this section is said to be restorable and the stratigraphy that we showed laid out below has no gaps or overlaps. OK, so let's explore this a little bit further with this hypothetical example. So in a balanced cross section, all layers have experienced the same horizontal shortening. Of course, this is for contractional tectonics. And it assumes that all layers were present before deformation and in this particular illustration that they were horizontal and parallel bedded before they were affected by the contractual tectonics. In other words, they look like this. So all the layers are present before deformation and they're horizontal and parallel to one another. And in this particular situation, we've labeled them up A as the oldest and E as the youngest. Notice that we've got two vertical reference lines shown X and Y. So after deformation, if the contraction experienced by all the layers is equal, then X and Y remain parallel to one another. They've just converged so that the horizontal distance between X and Y has reduced. So all layers here have experienced the same horizontal shortening. But the shortening itself between X and Y can be complex. And that's something we want to explore here. How can we analyze these deformations? So I'm going to illustrate this using a measured graphical experiment. And this shows the pre-deformation state where all the layers are present. That in this case is A through to G, the youngest. And all are horizontal and parallel bedded. On the right hand side, I've created a marker shown by that blue vertical line. Superimposed upon this stratigraphic template are two red dashed lines which represent trajectories that will be taken by thrust faults. At the bottom of the diagram is that grey material which is basement, if you will, and that will not be involved in the deformation. So here we go. This is the result of the contraction, and you'll notice our blue marker has moved in towards the left. And the section has been constructed to balance. In other words, the horizontal contraction is equal for all the layers. So section balancing, in practice, is an audit of the strain through the rot sequence. Let's see how we perform this audit. Well, here's our restored template. So we have a cross section above and a restored template below showing the pre-deformation configuration. If we're going to perform this audit of the contraction for all the layers, we have to be careful to define between which places we're making our measurements. And these places have to be common for all the layers. On the left hand side, we have a pin line. As the name implies, we assume that there has been no slip through the pin line. On the right hand side, we have a loose line. We also assume that this too has had no slip across it, but of course it's been broken where it would have cut into the underlying basement. 
But within the stratigraphic units above the basement that we can see here, we assume there's been no differential slip. If we can measure the restored length of the strata shown in the cross section and lay it all out so that it is horizontal and parallel bedded, and typically that the reconstructed loose line is vertical, we can call it robust, and the cross section therefore is balanced. So we have to be able to go from the upper state to the lower state. How in practice do we do this? So let's look at some approaches to section balancing. And the first one we're going to do is so-called line length or bed length balancing. And in this, we assume that the layers that we're analyzing have simply been folded concentrically and or have been offset by faults. And these are the only types of deformation allowed. So consider our black layer, layer D, running through the middle of our stratigraphy. This is deformed concentrically. In other words, the bed thickness around those folds is preserved. So a simple sinuous measurement around this bed length can lay it out flat. And this length is shown as the distance back to the loose line on the restored template below. We can do the same with layers B and F which are deformed by faulting as well as concentric folding and lay those out flat. And because these three layers now have the same length, we can see that the section as a whole is bed length balanced. Simply for this method, we measure the sinuous layer lengths from the cross section and report them onto the restored template. Line length or bed length balancing. Let's emphasize that the only deformations that we can apply this method to are for layers that show simply concentric folding or have been offset by faults. We call these rather special beds key beds. But of course, this is a very narrow range of deformation. But what if the layers show distributed strain? Well, that means we're going to have to modify our restoration approach. And rather than rely on the retention of bed length, we're going to assume that the cross sectional area of formations is maintained. This will allow them to distort, in other words, have experienced distributed strain. But in order to analyze them, we either need to be able to quantify that strain or unravel our cross section using adjacent key beds. So it's that latter approach that we're going to use here. So in this case, we're going back to show layer D, which deformed concentrically, and we can unravel that one so we know how long our cross section should be. But the adjacent units, layer C and layer E, are distorted. And the area within which the thicknesses of unit C and unit E have changed, I've just shaded up on the cross section here. And we can reconstruct where that patch is on the restored template. So to create a restoration for layers C and E, we have to unpack the strain so that these formations restore to the same length as the key bed D. So this is formation area balancing. We are assuming that the cross-sectional area of all our units, in this particular case though, as illustrated with layers C and E, is conserved during the deformation. And we would then match the cross-sectional area and unravel it to the restored length of that of the key beds, in this case, unit D. Now this is relatively straightforward if the stratigraphy was originally layer cake. In other words, we can independently establish what the undeformed thickness of layer E and C might have been. If not, we have to trade off variations in the pre-existing stratigraphic thickness with the strain and the restored length. This is more complicated, but it's still very tractable. So just to emphasize, a balanced cross section is one where all layers have experienced the same horizontal shortening. The balanced section is your interpretation of the structure as displayed on a cross section, and it is restorable so that you are able to show that all layers have experienced the same horizontal shortening. In other words, you can move from the deformed to the undeformed state through the restoration process. Therefore, we need to show both the cross section and its restored template. Throughout this, we're assuming plain strain. In other words, all the action is happening in the plane that we've drawn the cross section. There's no out of plane movement.
And that's what we've done with this cross section for the southern part of the European Alps. It's restorable onto the template below. It is rather more complicated than the measured graphical experiment we were just looking at because the pre existing stratigraphy varies from north to south across the area. In asking whether we think the cross section is balanced, we have to also ask whether the restored template is a realistic representation of a sedimentary basin, which seems reasonable in this case. Now, having this pair of sections in the pre-deformation and the final deformation state, we can use this to establish the orogenic contraction recorded by the structures that we see in the final state section. It's simply the difference in length of section between equivalent markers. And in this particular case, we can simply do the subtraction. The restored section has a length of about 150 kilometers and the equivalent geology has been squashed together to make a cross section of 85 kilometers across. Subtract 85 from 150 and we see that we've got a 65 kilometer orogenic contraction here. So that is a quick introduction to the theoretical basis behind section balancing in thrust belts. Section balancing is an audit of strain through a rock sequence. We started off looking at simple approaches where um, bed length or line length is conserved during the deformation, but that requires concentric folding and fault slip alone. Formation area balancing with key beds allows a more general approach to be adopted where deformation varies through multi-layers. We still have to assume plane strain, and in our simple example, the stratigraphy was layer cake before deformation. But formation area balancing can be applied to more complicated stratigraphic variations and more heterogeneous uh, strain through multi-layers. The key point, all layers have experienced the same horizontal shortening. We need to take particular care with where we put the loose lines and it's the ability to track the loose line behavior through the deformation that's the key to demonstrating that a cross section balances. But just because our section balances doesn't necessarily make it correct. Section balancing is a test of an interpretation of structural geometry, and more than one interpretation may fit the available data. So our balanced cross section may not be a unique illustration of the structural geometry. And we need to carry these interpretation uncertainties forward if we're to do anything else with the outputs from balanced cross sections.